and bringing attention to the present reality, <coughs> present reality. Feeling the the weight and texture of the the body. Listening to the sounds of the world. The birds making their morning noises, the pigeons crewing, the sounds of the room as we settle down. And listening too to the sounds of our mind. Just as we hear the the crewing of the pigeons, the clearing of the throat. The subtle rustles and clicks of our own bodies, our joints, our bones, our clothes. <coughs> so too, our own thoughts, our emotions, memories, ideas, they flow in a, a pattern of sound, the inner sound of thinking, imagining, remembering. So just as we can be open to the sounds of the world, the sounds of the room and the the environment of the retreat center, Amravati, is patiently listening, hearing the different sounds that uh, vibrate in the air around us. And as we listen to those, we realize we don't have to make up much of a story around them. It's just a bird, just a plane. Just a, a sound of somebody across the room. That's all. No need to make much out of it. No need to have a life story of the bird, an idea of where the plane is going. It's just a sound. Don't need to know who's clearing their throat across the other side of the hall. It's just a sound. Comes, goes, does its thing, vibrates within the space of, of this hall or in the space of Hertfordshire. That's all. Just a vibration flowing through space, doing its thing, arising and ceasing. In exactly the same way, we can relate to our own thoughts. An idea, an image, a fragment of song. A brilliant insight, a murmur of self-criticism. Just like the sounds of the birds, the passing aeroplanes, the sounds of the room. We can relate to these in exactly the same way. No need to write a big story or figure out what the name of the bird is, where the plane is going, who's on board. Like the the soldier on the battlefield shot with the arrow, we don't need to know. It's just sound, arising, ceasing. So too with our thoughts. It's just a, a passing memory, an idea of some job we've still got to do. 
an imagined future, a fragment of conversation, a tune of an old song. It arises, does its thing, and dissolves. We don't have to make much out of it. We can simply listen. Let that vibration happen within the open space of our awareness. A vibration arises, does its thing, fades away. It's like reflecting on all the, of the five khandhas, rupang anichang. The body is impermanent. Feeling is impermanent. Sanya anicca, perceptions are impermanent. A wave rises in the space of awareness, in the presence of the body, a feeling, a sight, a sound, a taste. It's the vibration in space, arising, taking shape, dissolving. No need to make a big story, create a, an elaborate commentary about it. is to know it's arising and ceasing, the samudaya and the niroda. As the Buddha said, whatever arises is just dukkha arising. Whatever ceases is just dukkha ceasing. The degree to which the mind makes that pattern real and solid, mine, That's the degree to which <coughs> dukkha is created. The degree to which it's seen as empty, insubstantial. Is the degree to which dukkha is transcended. There is no thing, no permanent, solid, separate, individual thing actually there. And when that thingness ceases, dukkha ceases. So too with our thoughts. Thoughts of uh, the important things that we have to do in the future, the important things we've done in the past, the dreadful things we've done in the past. Judgments about others, judgments about ourselves. These two are empty, insubstantial. It's like the sound of a pigeon or the shape of a cloud, the configuration of a leaf, a petal. It's just a shape, just a form in nature, arising, doing its thing, dissolving. Our tendency is to believe our thoughts. When the mind makes a judgment, this is great, I'm an awful person, I love that, that's good, that's terrible, I shouldn't have done that. The habit is to believe the content of a thought. But just because we think something, why does that make it true? Isn't that bizarre? Just because a thought forms in our mind, we assume it's an accurate representation of reality. That's very bizarre. Just because we think it, why does that make it true? If you notice, Something that we thought six months ago, we now, re we now think something different to. What we thought was real a year ago, five years ago, now we think something else is real. Well, if we were right, if we're right now, we must have been wrong then. And if we were wrong then, we're probably wrong now. So it helps to develop a a circumspection, a, 
a uh, a detachment from our thinking. And rather than believing the content of every thought that crosses our mind, pleased about this, irritated by that, inflated by this, regretting that, to learn to listen to our thoughts, just as if we were hearing the sound of the neighbor's radio. Just a pattern of sound, there's a certain meaning conveyed, but we're not even particularly interested, didn't even choose the station. It's just a little random commentary chattering on, an advertisement for a local car showroom, making comments about the upcoming flower show, the behavior of a a particular politician. The patterns have some degree of meaning, but we don't need to buy into them. We don't need to invest in them. Don't need to form an opinion about them. Don't need to be particularly interested. So we learn to listen. Just to patiently in an unbiased, open way, listen to the voices of your mind. The voices of the wise sage, the insightful understanding, the voices of the serious intellectual, the voice of the whining child, the voice of the, the anxious fuss-budget, all the different characters that populate our our thinking world. We all have our favorites. To just listen, as if you're in a committee room and around the table, all the different voices of the inner committee, the whining three-year-old, the wise sage, the serious rationalist, the anxious warrior, the practical organizer, the inner committee. You can just listen to them all. Listen to the voices arising, doing their thing, saying their peace. And if we learn to listen to our thoughts, our feelings, our attitudes in this way, then we realize we don't have to to suppress and to wipe out the the voices that we don't like. We judge ourselves for the ones that are crazy or selfish or caught up in love and hate and jealousy. But just to listen patiently, like being in a, a committee room. And the way that the committee say, carries out its, its work in a harmonious and effective way is if wisdom, mindfulness and wisdom are given the chair. So if the chair of the meeting is satipanya, mindfulness and wisdom, then everything can work, can be integrated in a very easy and helpful, open way. But if we're siding with particular voices, agreeing with this one, disagreeing with that one, getting lost in bias, caught up in uh, self-centered reaction, then you just have a big argument, chaos and conflict in the committee. So as the, the days unfold of our retreat time together, consciously develop this capacity of listening. Let satipanya, mindfulness and wisdom, be the chair that which receives, listens, 
to all the different voices. The hungry ghost. The seeker of self-advantage. The benevolent, friendly, generous one. The wise, insightful one. The upset and ranting three-year-old. The practical rationalist. Whoever might be in your own particular committee, listen to them. Receive the different voices without identifying with any particular one, without judging, just to listen. And sometimes it can help as the different patterns of thought take shape, particularly thoughts of judgment or self-criticism, thoughts of desire or aversion, just to catch the pattern of thought that's formed and steadily repeat it, just gently repeat it internally. And then this is a simple and direct way that we help thought to lose its power. Judging others. If you were different, I would be happy. I'm really the worst meditator in the room here. I know it. Everyone's better than me. When we pick up a thought, spell it out like that. Usually you can't get to the end of the sentence before it falls apart. It loses its strength. It ceases to be so compelling, convincing. If you were different, I would be happy. That might be the impulse that's felt, the, the judgment that passes through consciousness. But when we spell it out, bring it into the center of attention, it falls to pieces, carries no weight, can't, can't sustain itself, it's unconvincing. And the development of listening to the inner sound, the nada, the nada sound, the, the sound of silence, This can also be a way of supporting the capacity to listen to our own thoughts. Just listening to the inner sound, the continuous, non-personal flow, this gentle, continuous vibration. Just as we can listen to the inner sound, and it's, it's non-personal, it's not glamorous, it's not exciting, it's not boring. It's just present. It's just a vibration. It's not old or young, clever or stupid, female or male, bright or dark. It's just present. We can train ourselves to listen to our own thoughts in the same way. To let go of the content to let go of the compelling messages of I can't stand it, or this is great, I want more of this. Did I pay that bill? I know what I'm going to do when the retreat's over. I can't stand that person. Oh, I wish I had a shawl like that. Just to listen to the vibration. Receive it, just like the vibration of the inner sound. Let us listen, receive it, know it as a, a simple oscillation, just the, like the air moving from the sound of a bird or a passing plane, the sound of somebody rustling across the room. There's no particular meaning or no particular message, nothing we need to be forming an opinion or love or hate about. 
is the vibration of space. It's the pattern of nature. That's all. And when that's received into the open heart, and that's known with a uh, receptive, awakened awareness, there's a freshness, an ease, a peacefulness, a living peacefulness that is present. That attitude of uh, accommodating like an open-hearted acceptance, receiving all the vibrations of the world, knowing them, not pushing them away, not grasping hold, but simply attentive, receptive, awake. Let's see if we can do this to listen to the sounds of our thoughts in the same way that we listen to the nada sound. Interestingly enough, nada uh, in Sanskrit means sound. In Spanish it means nothing. No thing. Nada. So listening to the sounds of our thoughts, remember, you can recollect, consider. This is just like listening to no thing, receiving the vibration, which is not a thing, which is insubstantial, empty, void. The Buddha de described the five khandhas in exactly this way. You know, form is like a, a bubble in water, like a, fo uh, a, a lump of foam on the surface of the water. Feeling is like a bubble formed by a raindrop falling onto a, the surface of a pool. Perception. <coughs> it's like a, a mirror. Perception is like a mirage. A shape in space with no substance. Sankhara, mental formations, these are like the, the trunk of a, of a banana plant. There's sheaves of leaves like a leek or an onion, leaf upon leaf, with no trunk, no core. Consciousness, vijnana, the simple act of cognizing itself, discriminative consciousness, that which divides this from that. Vijnana is like a conjuring trick, an appearance, but without reality, no substance. So as we Observe and receive, listen to our thoughts, judgments, likes and dislikes through the day, to see if you can reflect upon them in this way. As hollow, insubstantial, like a mirage, like a conjuring trick, like a bubble. There's a form, there's a shape, but no substance, like a beam of light passing through the the dust in the morning. You pass your hand through the sunbeam and there's no resistance. There's a shape, there's a form, but no thing that's solid there. And in the moment that we relate to our thoughts, our judgments, likes and dislikes in this way, notice the freedom that comes when there's that genuine insight, that clear seeing, oh, there is no thing there. It's just a thought, a memory, an idea. That's all. Just like a shaft of sunlight through the dust.
nothing to get excited about, nothing to be afraid of. And then we find that we can quite enjoy, delight in the shape, and not feel confined or restricted, burdened by that in any way. It's just the patterns of nature resounding in the open space of awareness, coming, going, changing, that's all. <laughs>